Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, now and Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you rejected me? And why do I wander in such gloom while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your sanctuary. That I may go to the altar of God to the God of my joy and gladness, and on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Send out your light, Lord, send your truth to A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the res resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. may be seated as you're beginning to figure out Natalie's family our rector Natalie's family has hit the COVID skids and she is home with them um, they're slowly getting well and Natalie is so far was fine when we last talked with her um, but we're behind her making it all work um, I welcome today a part of our congregation, Martha Banwell, who is um, both a teacher, an English teacher, and also a carer of animals. And we're really glad that she's learning to be a preacher. Um, and we welcome her to our pulpit today. Thank you, Martha. Just a little aside before I begin, I taught eighth grade, and if you wanted to get eighth graders' attention, you became very, very quiet. And habits like that stick. So if you can't hear me, even though I'm double mic'd, just <laughs> scream loudly. <laughs> um, this one does, it's supposed to. Um, Obello. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be gracious and pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I was part of Pastor Natalie's Lay Teach Heal Academy course last year for which I prepared a sum a sermon on Psalm 43, 
that I preached here softly at Redeemer this Wednesday. When she and her family had to quarantine for COVID, she asked if I might preach the same sermon this morning. However, I wondered if I could try writing and preaching a sermon for today's gospel text. I realized soon that today's text connects a great deal with my life and I think with all of our lives here today. As a number of you know, Barry and I were married here recently at Redeemer, 15 days ago. When thinking about our day, we soon decided we wanted a wedding rather than a quiet, private ceremony. We believe that making this immense promise to each, of, uh, each other in, the front, in front of God and the people whom we loved and who loved us from all the many parts of our lives was truly important. And besides, you only get married for the second time once. <laughs> Planning the wedding was a blast. The few bumps we encountered along the way became fodder for jokes and eye rolls between us. Then it happened. Less than a week before the wedding, we had to prepare a seating chart. It was so much harder than it sounds. Could so-and-so sit with so-and-so? Would so-and-so be offended by sitting at a table away from center stage? Why have a head table if people will be upset by being excluded from it? What is it about table settings that carry the power to influence people's responses to an otherwise joyous moment? When I first read the gospel story for today, I thought about how often Jesus teaches at meals and about who sat where at these tables. Meals are central settings to much of his life recorded in the gospel. You can hardly get through a chapter without finding the man at a dinner party or inventing one if fo folks are low on food. Jesus was Jewish, a tradition that puts a primary emphasis on home rather than synagogue celebrations. So Je Jesus teaches from his life and his culture, a location that his friends and followers and curious bystanders would immediately understand and be comfortable in eating together and hearing his divre Torah or Torah talks. In other words, Jesus wants to talk about the content of God from Holy Scripture over food. Yet even though he follows the conventional teaching structure of his time, and similar, similar to what you find at many of our local synagogues today, mealtimes with Jesus take on a very different significance. Rather than sharing bread as a way to connect with his own family, he engages the mealtime as a means of collecting a wider family around the table, all of whom are eager for God's word. In short, he creates a surprising and unusual extended family that no one would expect or even perhaps consider desirable. Jesus eats with all sorts of people, thus challenging the social exclusivity of his time. His table includes the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. His table includes the rich and the foreign and the elite. His table stirs in tax collectors and widows alike, making for a scene that suggests we ask the old Sesame Street question, which one of these is not like the other ones? The answer, none. None of them, not one of them. Jesus patches in an array of people who would have never thought to be in one another's company, nor welcomed in each other's company, nor necessarily wanted to be in each other's company. This gospel story tells us about an invitation Jesus receives to celebrate Shabbat, the Friday night holy dinner with an important Pharisee, a member of a group known for its strict adherence to Jewish law and who sometimes got misportrayed as a monolithic group dedicated to a sense of social superiority. But it is true that in Jesus' time, where a person sat at the Shabbat table, 
of an important high-ranking Pharisee mattered a lot. If somehow one messed up and sat in a table above one's status, the host would make the guest um, move, which of course even now would be a case of public humiliation. Having to move one's seat impacted the guest in more ways than one, even after the Friday holy meal. In fact, this, a son or daughter's eligibility on the marriage market could be impacted negatively by such a slight. Into such a Shabbat dinner, with such clear stakes, comes Jesus, who with rabbinic authority announces to unsuspecting guests that they should choose intentionally to set themselves at places lower than they feel is their social rank. Not only that, he tells the hosts that their guest list shouldn't reflect social posturing. Guest lists shouldn't be lined with those from whom something could be gained, status, wealth, resources, a good business deal. Rather, fill the tables with those who would be startled to receive such an invitation. Invite people who would respond by asking, me, really? With honest surprise rather than with false humility. What is hidden in this invitation is not a disinvitation to those who have more. It is not a disinvitation to the wealthy and high-ranking people of the world full of status and strength. <laughs> hidden in Jesus' invitation is an invitation for the same people to sit at the same people with those who are usually disinvited. To begin to see the world with God's eyes, which flings open the doors to invite everyone to attend, and then some. And if there isn't enough room, bring on more tables, get a bigger hall. To the elite of the time, there was no honor in such a gathering. Jesus claims otherwise. The surprise of everyone. He's got everyone turning and looking at themselves in comparison with the others, asking, me? To which Jesus replies in the words we rehearse weekly, especially at the altar when receiving the bread and the cup for you. The stuff of God is indeed for you, for all of us. Jesus wants us to focus our attention away from the menu and tend to the guests. He throws the contemporary view of dining and hosting on its head. He proposes that these meals are the opportunity for people to meet the extravagant grace and love of God in the faces and through the hands of the most unexpected neighbors. People become brothers and sisters, friends in Christ. Meals at Jesus' table reconfigured his world, reconfigure our world, invite us to the table in God's world. Mao Zedong once famously said, a revolution is not a dinner party. He was wrong. A place at Jesus' table was an invitation to participate in the most revolutionary work of God, to be witnesses for and recipients of the free love of God given for and to you, and for that guy, and for her, and for that Republican over there, and for that black woman over here, and for our transgendered friend just outside the church doors or wondering if they're welcome here as they navigate life in their body, and for the peacenik who wishes we could all get along, and from my own experience, for the recent refugee who didn't expect to be unrooted to the, uprooted to this neighborhood and hasn't have quite figured out where to secure a mattress for his mother-in-law, and for the child who's just too wiggly to sit in the pew, and we know those two girls well here, and for the doubter who sits in these pews, sometimes okay with the whole of the God thing and other times questioning if it's just a load of hooey. And for me, who left the church for more than a season and have returned in grace. 
And for you, in whatever season you are, whatever place you are, whatever condition you are, today Jesus shows up with a radical invitation that is perhaps best seen at the altar rail as all of us, in whatever circumstances we're in, reach out our hands and hear, this stuff is for you. This body of Christ is for you. This bread is for you. And perhaps the only thing more shocking than this gift of grace, binding us into the life flow of God, is for me is to turn to my left and to my right and to hear that same gift is also for my neighbors and your neighbors. There's more than enough to go around in God's kingdom. You're on the guest list, I'm on the guest list, and we all get a place at the table with our Lord Jesus Christ sitting at the head. This is the promise of life now, which gives us the best image of life in the world to come. Amen. Please rise and join me now as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, upon being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are in your bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for your church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray for the divine and the found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. I ask your prayers and thanksgiving. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored.
God before our redemption gave the only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone. Okay, a family of Ukrainian refugees is going to be moving into Squirrel Hill just about a block away from here on Tuesday. And so we have been asked to reach out to them with friendly greetings and any help that we can provide. This is a mother and father and a son who will be attending eighth grade at Colfax. They also have a son who is going to college in Buffalo. Uh, so I have a card that uh, if you want to come to the parish hall, coffee hour is canceled today, but you can come to the parish hall and sign this card, uh, giving your greetings. And if you want to offer any kind of help with practicing their English or furnishing their home or whatever is your special skill, uh, you can put your contact information there. I also have a flyer that I will hang up on the bulletin board that has an email address that you can contact with your offers of help. Thanks.
announcements. Now it's our job, our, our joy, to welcome those folks who are here this morning that we haven't had a chance to see recently. Um, so glad to have you with us. And we welcome now the people that are on Zoom, including Natalie and her family. So cheers to Natalie and Dan and little folks who join them. Um, Dick Smethurst, our good friend, is going to be having some, a medical procedure this week. And uh, we are glad to be able to offer prayers for him. So if you just remain in your seat for a minute, uh, we will pray for Dick. Now you can, whatever's comfortable, just hold on to them. These are the words, and this is for you. Just um, lean them. There. We use oil that has been blessed, uh, and keep, we keep it here uh, to use in our prayers for those that are sick. If you read the New Testament, you discover that it was important to them uh, to be with one another in this way, uh, to pray for those who are sick, to lay hands on them, to <laughs> and to uh, use oil of anointing, which is an old, old, old way of passing along spirit and prayer. So, Dick, we pray for you now. Gracious God, we commend to your loving care all who suffer, especially those who come here seeking your healing grace. Give them patience and hope in their distress. Strengthen and uphold them in mind and body and grant by your intervention that all your people may be made whole according to your desire through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our brother in Christ, Dick, will have surgery this week, and we gather around him today to send him with God's blessing and love. Dick, as you are outwardly anointed with this oil, <coughs> so may our loving God give you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. May God relieve your suffering and restore you in body, mind, and spirit. May all of us in the frailty of our flesh know God's healing power. And now, may God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Peace, Dick. Thank you. Wow. Okay. I'm very moved. Okay. Folks, may I interject two more very quick announcements? I can't hear you. May announcements uh, on Natalie's behalf next week reminder blessing of the backpacks the week after that is welcome back Sunday uh, more details available in newsletters if you're not getting them contact one of uh, Diane or me and we'll get you hooked up or email the office walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit. You have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share all human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we pray, our Father in heaven. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. 
I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please rise as we pray together the, po the prayer, the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.